The Echolab MVS6 switcher is the switcher that you'll use for productions in Studio 2. Uh, it is a fairly complex switcher, but not so complex that you can't learn what you need to do to work as an effective technical director on productions. The first thing you want to do when you approach the switcher is reset it for default conditions. And the easiest way to do that is push black on all of the buses, make sure all of the take bars are down. Then what you'll do is the one recall panel procedure. Push the number one in the keypad and then recall panel immediately to its left. This will reset all the settings and menu items in the switcher beyond the physical buttons and take bars. Next what you'll want to do is determine which ME or which bus is on program. There is a program light on the switcher that indicates which ME, ME2 or ME1 is on program. If I move the master fader up to ME1, you see the light moves to ME1. If I bring it down to ME2, the light comes down to ME2. If you use the auto take or the cut buttons, they will switch program, but notice the take bar doesn't move. So always look for the program light to tell you which ME is on program. Then we backtrack. So right now we're on ME2. Our midstream key for our graphics is down or off, so that doesn't really matter for us at the moment. Our mix wipe fader is down on bus B, which means our current active bus is ME2 bus B. So if I were to push a different source here, you'd see it come up in program. And just by pushing a different button on whatever is on program, I can cut between different sources. This is the most basic transition that the switcher can perform. In the control room, we have both program and preview monitors. The current active bus is shown on program. The other ME's active bus is shown on preview. So if we look at the other ME, which is ME1, its midstream keyer is down, so no graphics are on at the time. Uh, the, its mix wipe fader is also down on B right now, which means any of the buses in ME1B will show up on preview. We have even color bars there, uh, different effects and graphics, whatever source we want to grab. That's how we can see things on preview. In this next portion of the video, we're going to step through the first part of the lab exercise for students in Television Production 1. Step 1. Identify and set the switcher to its normal position and reset it for standard operation using the one recall panel. We'll black everything. All the take bars are down. And we'll push one recall panel. Next, identify the current program ME and bus and put color bars on program. Currently, we're on ME2 based on the light. Our buses are down on B, and it says to put color bars on, and we'll get color bars on program. Step three, identify what's currently on preview, the ME and bus, and put camera four on preview. We previously identified that ME1 would be on preview. Bus B is currently active, so it asks for camera four on ME1 bus B, which is preview, and you can see that in preview. Using the master fader set to fade mode, transition from color bars to camera four on program. Master fader, fade, transitioning from color bars to camera four. Note that program and preview have now flip-flopped on the monitors. Step five, using the ME now on program, fade from camera four to camera two by presetting camera two on the alternate non-program bus and fade to it using the mix wipe fader in the mix mode. So it's asking for camera two in the non-program bus, because program is on B, and we'll fade to it, making sure our fade option is selected, and we'll move the bar, and we fade it to two. Step six says cut to camera three. Staying on the active bus, we'll cut to camera three. Step seven says cut to camera four. Step eight, fade to camera one. Keeping in mind if we push this, it'll cut to camera one. If we set up camera one on the other bus, we can then fade to it. Next it says put camera three in preview. Since this has been our program bus, we want to jump back to the other ME and put camera three in preview. Right now we've got color bars, so we'll push camera three for preview. Use the auto take button to automatically fade program camera one to camera three. Camera one is on program in our program bus. Camera three is already on preview. You can see that in the monitors. We can use the auto take button to transition between the two. 
Step 11, fade to black without using the black fade button. Currently our program is on ME2. We see camera 3 in our program video monitor. We want to fade to black. If we push this button it would cut to black. Black is already set in actuality on our A bus and we could fade from our B bus to our A bus. And finally, the last step of the first part here, return the switcher to its normal position and ensure that the master fader T-bar is aligned with the ME program indicator light. Remember when we pushed auto take, it's flip-flopped. We moved program without moving the take bar. So if we move the take bar, it's still flip-flopped. So we can just push auto take or cut again to match those back up. All take bars down. And normally we would push black in all the buses, but just to prove that one recall panel does make this change as well, I'll push it here. We're now moving on to part two of the switcher lab, wipes, borders, and keying graphics. Step one, build a split screen or half wipe effect on ME2 program with camera one on the A bus and camera two on the B bus. You may need to change the wipe pattern to the correct one. So right now if we wipe, we're getting a split screen effect. However, the lab is asking us to put camera one on the left side of the frame and camera two on the right side. So we need to change the wipe pattern. By pushing the ME2 pattern, since we're working on ME2, it tells us that currently pattern two is selected. However, pattern one is the one we want. So push one, and then ME2 pattern again to assign it to ME2. Now when we wipe, we've got our wipe going through the frame so that we could have cameras on left and right. Step two, adjust the thickness of the border by twisting the border pot. Set it to be relatively thick. We'll bring the border on, we can get it very thick, we can get it very thin or non-existent, so we'll set it to relatively thick. Change the color of the border by adjusting the three pots in border color. Depending on where it was set before, we may have to spin these a few times until we start seeing something. So there's some green. We can spin our hue to get a different color of border. All right. We can also adjust the saturation for the intensity of the color and the luminance for the brightness of the color. Step four, adjust the softness of the border by rotating the soft pot in the ME2 pattern control area. Right now we're working with ME2, so I'll adjust the softness for ME2, and you can see that that can make some changes there. And the lab asks for it just to be adjusted. Step five asks us to put camera three in preview. Using the master fader, enable the horizontal wipe option and half wipe camera three onto program. Bring up a full screen graphic on the inscriber character generator. Using the midstream keyer on ME2, key the graphic fully. Notice how it takes place of the camera one, camera two split, but does not actually appear full screen on program. Take off the key. Turn on the downstream keyer and see what happens with the full screen now. So we'll go to our downstream keyer section and notice that it keys over everything, including the split. Finally, use the black fade button in the downstream key area to fade your three-way split to black. Notice that it will fade both the three-way split to black, and if we have the downstream keyer on, it'll fade that to black as well. Finally, return the switcher to its normal position and ensure everything is set as it should be. We now move to part three, chroma keying, or green screening. Set the switcher to its normal position, just like before, we want to make sure we hit that one recall panel this time again, just to make sure everything is set on the keying system. Set up the chroma key by selecting camera one on ME2 bus A. Camera one is the only camera on the switcher that will work with the green screen and the chroma key. Uh, it's a hardware limitation, so we have to put camera one on the A bus. We could use ME1 just as well, but for this uh, part, uh, of the switcher lab, we want to do it on programs so that we can see what's going on very easily. So put camera one on the A bus. In the upstream key control area, click the on button. Verify that the keying system being used is chroma key by clicking the cut select button until C key appears in the switcher status display. Move the mix wipe fader to the bus A position. 
thus bringing the chroma key on to program. You'll see camera one with the green screen replaced by black or whatever is currently selected on bus B. Change the selection on bus B and you'll get a different background. So if we change to camera one, we'd see the green screen as being shot by camera one. But if we change to camera two, now camera two is being replaced. Camera three, camera four, our full screen from our character generator. We could even put America in the background from another source. Adjust the clip and hue pots to adjust the properties of the chroma key. Try changing the settings so that the blue newscast set is keyed out instead of the green screen. Leave the chroma control set so that the green screen is visible and the blue set walls are keyed out. So we'll change our chroma key settings. There's our clip which changes the intensity of the key. You can see that we can cut very little of the green or just about everything on the set. Our highlight needs to be on all the time. That basically enables the keying function, so just leave that all the way up. And then hue is what we can adjust. And we can spin this control, and you can see that at some point, we start to get to the blue in the new set walls. And now we've keyed out the blue instead of green. We can key out the green. We can even key out the red. If you look at the railing, we're keying the railing because we've chosen a red color. You can see it changing as I adjust the clip and change the intensity of that key. So the lab asks us to change to blue so that we're keying out blue. Notice we can get a variation of blue, the blue in the globe or just the blue in the set walls. We can refine that as much as we want. Currently the lights are not on in the newscast set, uh, just the green screen wash light. Uh, so with more lights we'll have a little bit of a cleaner key on the set. Move the mix wipe fader down to the B bus position and turn the keying control off by pushing the on button to cycle it to the off mode. Move the mix white fader back up to the A position and you'll see camera one with the green screen just as it was before. Now since the keyer is off, pushing something on the B bus has no effect. Return the switcher to its normal position and reset it for standard operation. Perform the chroma key again and note that the settings have returned to keying out the green screen and not the blue walls. Turn the keyer on, and since we pushed that one recall panel, all of our keying settings are reset to key out the green screen. Return the switcher to its normal position and perform one recall panel one more time. These are the three parts of the Television Production One Switcher Lab. They should give you a brief introduction to the basics of switcher operation. The recorded portion of the TV One Switcher Lab is not demonstrated in this video you'll want to come to an open lab to try that out for yourself.